to Bugs and Blue Jays. Your place for everything related to the Toronto Blue Jays. Here's your hosts, Jesse Burrell and Riley McConnell. Now let's get on with the show. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode 142 of Buds and Blue Jays, your place for all things related to the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Jesse Burrell, joined as always by my co-host, Riley McConnell. And today on our show, Riley, we're feeling pretty generous over here as we are handing out some awards. Yes, we are the trophy makers ourselves. We pondered the ballots. We've surveyed hundreds of Blue Jays fans, and we've came up with some of the best awards that we're giving out here. So Riley and I are very excited for that. Um, we've got some fun ones, we've got some wacky ones, and we've got all the ones you can expect on our show. But first, before we get into it, guys, remember, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that fun stuff. We were with you all regular season. We're going to be with you again all off season and any big news that happened with the Toronto Blue Jays. But Riley, last time we talked, you told us you were disgusted at the stake of the playoffs, that the Blue Jays weren't in it, and that you weren't going to watch again until we get to the World Series. Well, the World Series now begins tomorrow or tonight, depending on when you are watching this. And we have a finals match. So, Riley, are you excited for some World Series baseball here? First and foremost, let these be my first words and sentences on this pod. I'm so glad that the Houston Astros are not in the Fall Classic this year. I think that the Texas Rain and we have the Arizona Diamondbacks with some of our Blue Jays on their team. Honestly, 2016 Rangers... 2023 Rangers. I have different takes on those teams. It was a different time. Totally ball club. And as far as the D-backs go, that's a lot of uh, homegrown players. You know, of course, Lourdes and Moreno being there as well. I don't care who wins. Texas has never won a world championship, which I think is crazy. They've been around for a long time, had some very good um, teams across that span. And then, of course, probably one of the best World Series in 2001, the Yankees and the Diamondbacks. And then one of my favorite all-time outfielders, Luis Gonzalez, of course, with the broken, pretty much a broken bat single up the middle off uh, Mar Mariano Rivera. I mean, that was uh, that was one of the best World Series, like, I think probably since Joe Carter's uh, walk-off, since the 93 mm -hmm. World Series. It was, it started uh, the uh, 21st century off with a real bang uh, as far as, uh, you know, baseball playoffs in the World Series go. But, uh, yeah, didn't watch the championship series, won't lie about that, but uh, really excited to dive into the World Series. I will say there was some fun baseball being played in the AL and NL championship series. Um, I think I want the Diamondbacks to win here. They're the young team. They're the fun team. They're the team playing over their head. But we have lots of Blue Jays on either side, whether Goriel or Moreno get it or um, Marcus Semien gets a ring for his one year here. Either way, there's going to be a Blue Jay getting a World Series ring at some point here. I am very excited. I'm hoping for a long, dramatic and fun series because once it's over, we have no more baseball until the month of uh, the month of March, basically. So I'm looking forward to that. But Riley, enough about the other teams. We are a Toronto Blue Jays podcast. So let's talk about the Toronto Blue Jays. And we are handing out some awards here. We are going to name the award. We're kind of giving an argument back and forth for who we think it's going to be and then announce a winner here. And I think uh, you guys playing at home can tell us if you agree with our awards, who you would give an award. Is there a dark horse or whatever it may be to these awards, Riley? But without further ado, Riley, ready to get going? Let's let's fire this up, man. I'm right. stoked. One of our more fun episodes we do. It always is. All right. Let's start right at the top with the Toronto Blue Jays team MVP, Riley. And the nominations for this award, I suppose, could go to Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, Kevin Gosman, Jordan Romano, Riley. And I guess there are others if you're going off board there. But Riley, who is the 2023 Blue Jays MVP? So I won't wrap. I won't wrap a pitcher around this award, sadly, although, you know, just to do the spread of the board, although Kevin Gosman was our real team MVP this year, but I do like to hand MVPs to position players and that honor will go to Mr. Bo Bichette, mm -hmm. who improved a lot of facets of his game. As I said, I, called it that he would get 200 hits of course he was hurt but still ends up in the top five and hits across the american league so i mean what else can you say about this guy his defense drastically improved he's a bit you know not a liability on the base pass but i'm not sure what's happening there but i mean as far as a major league shortstop goes he's young um, he's gaining experience. He's a flashy, cool guy. He gets at the top of your lineup. I mean, he's he's a great face for our franchise with Vladdy not having that great of a year. And I'm I can't wait 
one guy I will be watching for next year is Bo. Bo is our MVP this year, and I think I probably said the same thing last year if I was to run the tape on it. Riley, I have no disagreement with you here. Not even one in the slightest. Bo Bichette is definitely our team MVP. Not only did he lead the team in war with his 3.8 war on the season, the defense got a lot better, which you mentioned, and the bat was still consistent as ever. He doesn't get hurt. He leads. Uh, he gets 200 hits. He leads the American League in hits once again, Riley. And the thing I think that sealed the case here as Bo Bichette as team MVP, if you remember late in the season, I think it was the end of August, early September, when Bo Bichette did get hurt and he had to miss a few games there. Um, a lot of other Blue Jays, Jose Barrios, Chris Bass included, were asked what an absence to Bo Bichette would mean. And he was said numerous times that we are losing our best player. Our best player is getting hurt, our catalyst. And if the guys in the clubhouse believe Bo Bichette was the team MVP, then we're not going to be any different. I think Bo Bichette is the unanimous team MVP for the Toronto Blue Jays this year. Couldn't agree more with you, Jesse. Hell of a year. There's going to be a lot more good years uh, for Bo Bichette coming up. Does it disappoint you at all that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. did not win team MVP, seeing how he almost won an actual league MVP just two years ago? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we'll get to awards that are labeled Vlad for the most part, um, you know, and maybe in the more let down areas. But uh, I mean, yeah, you expect a guy like that to produce big numbers. He didn't. And Bo, I can't even say Bo has exceeded my expectations, but he is, uh, well, yes, he has exceeded my expectations and just the kind of ca uh, counter stats and how many uh, extra base hits he gets, how many regular hits he gets. And again, how much his defense has improved because he made a you know in the clutch defense as well i think there's a play i off the top of my head where he made a backhanded grab threw it over to first game saving play out of your shortstop i mean there's not much more uh that could make Bo more of a complete player i mean you're bound to get hurt you're an everyday shortstop you're not you're gonna get a year like that yep i agree 100 percent um if you had to place a bet right now on who's mvp next year Bo Bichette, vladimir guerrero jr or are you taking the field I'm I'm honest. I'm I'm going Bo for for this again. Mm -hmm. I I think I think it's not even the safe bet. I think it's just the logical um, logical bet to take at this point in in how he's progressed uh, through his career. And you can still see him taking another step forward as well, which I think I'm with you, Riley. Bo Bichette, MVP of the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays. From the offensive side to the pitching side, Riley, let's talk Cy Young Award winners. And the Blue Jays had lots of good pitching. In fact, our pitching staff was one of the best in all of baseball. I guess your nominees, you could name our whole starting rotation. But Riley, I think it's quite obvious for me and maybe for you. Um, who wins the AL or the Toronto Blue Jays Cy Young Award this year? Well, the words almost came out of your mouth, AL Cy Young, because yeah. he was very close to getting this. Again, it's a no-brainer, man. Has to go to Kevin Gosman. I mean, the okay. amount of strikeouts he racked up, um, the innings he hauled, how disgusting his pitches are. I think this is one of the best pitching free agent signings that we've, you know, I mean, Dickey was a good one uh, for sure. Well, Dickey was a trade, but, but yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Yes. Dickey was a trade. So as far as free. Um, I mean, Gosman has got to be up there. Of course, Robbie Ray as well, but uh, the one this year, and I know Ray did win uh, in, in uh, a Cy Young, but, I mean, the dominance, it just felt like Kevin Gosman was always in the driver's seat, even when he wasn't. It always You always felt comfortable with him. He is a true major league ace. Um, of course, you know, I'm a big hair guy in baseball. And, you know, he got an adjustment to his hair. I didn't know how that would affect him. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know, you're into the game score stuff. He probably put together like his one of his top five game scores of the year and then kept cruising from there. Um, I mean... When it came down to the playoffs, it doesn't matter. The 162 game season is what we were talking about here for the most part. So, I mean, Kevin Gosman is a no brain Cy Young Award winner for the Blue Jays for our team award. I mean, yeah, we had a lot of good pitchers. We had four fantastic starting pitchers, but Gosman takes the cake as far as being that um, number one out of that group of starting pitchers. Yeah, all four of our starting pitchers had a war over 2.6, which is amazing. But Kevin Gosman is the correct answer for the AL Cy Young Award. Uh, his second year here with Toronto, he had 5.3 war, a 3.16 ERA, a FIP even lower than that, Riley. I said it a few episodes ago. I'll say it again. He set the record for strikeouts per nine in a single season in Blue Jays franchise history. This is a team that's had multiple Cy Young Awards winner. This is a team that had Roger Clemens pitch for us. Kevin Gosman struck out more per nine innings than any of them. And if that does not get you the Cy Young Award, I do not know what will. 
Great stuff from Kevin Gosman. Um, if you had to pick next year, do you think he does it again? Or does a guy like Barrios Kikuchi or maybe even a random free agent signing um, replace Kevin Gosman as the Blue Jays Cy Young for next season? This is a way tougher question than the uh, position player. Pitchers are a lot weirder in a lot of different ways. I would love to say Kevin Gosman is, but he might take a whole, you know, three quarters – add three quarters of an ERA and still be a great pitcher in baseball. And Barrios could, you know, cut his ERA by let's, I'm not saying half, but I mean half a run and, you know, lower his walks and hits per nine by, you know, a slight amount. And we could be looking at pretty comparable numbers there. And, uh, you know, the strikeouts maybe don't fall his way, but I mean, I'm going to still say Gosman, but I'm saying it's going to, you know, it was still close this year, Jesse. I mean, we had three pitchers that, or sorry, four pitch, four pitchers. We had four pitchers with absolutely fantastic lines. Um, and Gosman obviously being the best, I think, if we, you know, same story goes for next year. And when it's all said and done, then yeah, I, I, I would say that, uh, I would say that Gosman might um, not pitch how he did this year, but um, you know, it, it's, it's tough to top something like that, like this year, Jesse, it really is. Yeah. I have more faith in Bo Bichette being team MVP next year than I do have Kevin Gosman repeating as team Cy Young, but that might be a conversation we get to into the off season. Riley, I think our first two were pretty obvious. So that's the way we thought we were going to go this next one, Riley, we might actually have some debate on, and we talked defense a lot in our last episode. We're going to talk some more defense now, Riley, who is the Toronto Blue Jays gold glove award winner? For the 2023 season, it was for me. It's between it's between two guys, and I think when you look at it and how defense is played, we got together an outfield significantly different than having Lourdes and Teoscar at the corners. Of course, George Springer moving to right, but I mean it's between Kiermaier and Varsho. And yep. for me, uh, this year it was Kevin Kiermaier um, is my mm. pick at a Gold Glove Award winner. I mean, we see him, we saw him. Sorry. In, uh, in the Rays uniform for years, winning gold gloves and making these amazing plays. And he was in our Blue Jays blue this year and was doing, I mean, fantastic things. It seems, you know, I don't even know if he has decreased in his, you know, ability to run in the field. I know that run, running on the base pass and running in the field are two very different things. You know, the ability to track a ball uh, versus getting a good jump um, from a pitch or something like that. It's, it's you know, speed is is kind of the constant, but getting good reads is important. And Kevin Kiermaier is someone who can do an absolutely fantastic job at tracking baseballs. And even when he doesn't, um, I've seen him make a great recovery play in an yep. instant and, you know, and then the other part of his game is, of course, Kevin Kiermaier still has one of the better arms as a center fielder. Uh, the guy's a highlight reel. The guy is if 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 Cooperstown and the writers cared more about defense, then Kevin Kiermaier is a Hall of Famer based off his defense. I don't think he's making it to Cooperstown because, you know, it's a pretty hitter savvy you know, ballot for the most part. That's just how baseball has been traditionally. Um, but if you talk about the best defenders of all time, um, you know, 15 years from now, I think Kevin Kiermaier is, is, should be regarded for a defensive outfielder as one of the greatest to ever do it. Yeah, I agree with you, Riley. Um, I think Kevin Kiermaier is the answer here. Um, in fact, Sports Info Solutions just came out with their awards and they gave Kevin Kiermaier the nod as the best center fielder in baseball. If you look at his stuff, Riley, 96th percentile in fielding run value. His arm strength is 95th percentile. His range is 98th percentile. His sprint speed, Riley, also didn't lose a beat. Still 87th percentile, which isn't bad for the 33-year-old coming to the season. Look, the Blue Jays made a game plan to improve their defensive outfield going into last year. And I'd say it worked because even though we're giving this award to Kevin Kiermeyer, I really did want to give some love to Dalton Varsho, who played some very good left field, who played some very good center field. In fact, I don't think Dalton Varsho gets as much love for his defense as Kiermeyer does because some of the difficult plays Dalton Varsho was already there. Like I've been watching a lot of outfield defense in this, um, this American league and national league championship series. And there have been several times I've watched a ball hit to the corner outfield. And I just go, Dalton Varsho catches that Dalton Varsho gets there standing up. So the blue Jays have been blessed. You could make arguments for Matt Chapman, Jose Brios, Alejandro Kirk as well, um, for winning defense. But I do think Kevin Kiermaier is the answer in center field. 
I mean, what an addition, though. Just those two guys alone. I mean, that's night and day from where we were we were talking last year for Gold Gloves because I probably said Chapman had a down year, of course. And uh, but yeah, when you're talking about a guy like it could have, I'm content with if we if you said Varsho, I would have had no argument because those are the two correct answers mm-hmm. as far as as far as our Gold Glovers or whatever you want to call it. They're both elite defenders. I mean, you have two center fielders. Stalin Varsho is an everyday center fielder for, you know, a weaker defensive club. It, there's, there's no doubt about it. I hope they both collect gold gloves this year. I hope they do. I really do. There seems to be some buzz that Varsho won't. And if he doesn't, we riot. We talk about it on the show. Uh, moving on to the next award, Riley. We're going to the young guns, the young players, the mystery box, the we don't know what this guy is going to be award. And the Blue Jays, I call this the uh, the Eric Hinsky award. And uh, this goes to the best Blue Jays rookie on the year. The Blue Jays didn't really have a ton of rookie performances on the roster, but uh I'll give it to you here, Riley. Who wins the Blue Jays' best rookie for the 2023 season? I mean, to say that this player wins the Eric Hinsky Award, I mean, they will have to rename the award after this player. Davis yeah. Schneider yes. is the player on this ball club who, I mean, once he got his cup of coffee, he drank, 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 and stayed up with the team because this guy was elite. The best baseball player on the planet for – the. The first time he touched a major league field and for, you know, a week, two weeks going afterwards, David Schneider was very exciting. Um, it's not too often you see a rookie come up in DH as much as he did as well, especially not a big first like first base type guys, maybe, but an infielder, a middle infielder to come up and DH as much as he did and hit as well as he did. I mean, he's a special kind of breed of ball player. Of course, we were talking about a guy like Dan Ugla. And like, we love those ball players on this pod. We love a, gr- a, a grit, grindy, you know, get it done kind of guy. Davis Schneider is that kind of guy. And, uh, you know, we have just cracked the surface of his playing career. Who knows what is going to happen for this season He's absolutely, you could nominate him as he was our best player for for a time on our team. But for this award, he's certainly our best rookie. He wins the 2023, I love it, Eric Hinsky Award. I love it. 2001 or 2002 rookie of the year, Eric Hinsky. 2002, right? 2002 sounds right. Yes. Oh, I don't know. I'm just guessing. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Um, David Schneider really was the only real option here. I remember when he came on and we had that series in Fenway, Riley, we we said David Schneider saved our season. We needed a spark and boy, did David Schneider ever do it. There was some strikeout issues towards the stretch there. Um, We talked about a lot come playoffs, how we want to see more David Schneider. We'll talk about him a lot more this offseason as well and what the plan is for David Schneider, but I think he is an everyday player and should be playing. In terms of this award, Riley, There are only five Blue Jays who got at least five plate appearances or at least five innings pitch on the rookie side. And aside from David Schneider, your other options were Spencer Horowitz, Nathan Lucas, Cam Eden, or then Bowden Francis on the pitching side. I really do not think um, it was anywhere close. This was David Schneider's award pretty much since the first series he came up. So basically, you just wanted to arrange this. Uh, You wanted to make just so we could talk about David Schneider on this. Yes, I did. (laughs) Totally okay with that. I'm totally okay. Hook, line, and sinker. You baited me because David Schneider. Um, I hope we. Uh, he got a lot of buzz around the MLB. I hope Jesse. I hope that he gets you know the same kind of thing going into next year. I, I hope he's not. He won't be able to repeat what he did, but I hope he still puts up really good numbers and is still you know the talk of the town, so to say, for a time. Yep, and uh, if we were giving an award for the best facial hair on the team, too, um, I think he gets that one guaranteed. A rookie with that can swing and has the mustache that will go with it, that's a rookie in my books right there. All right, Riley, moving on to our next award. This is the Travis Snyder Award, and this goes to the best Blue Jays prospect. Now, this one might be interesting. You might have to dig deep into the New Hampshire and Buffalo rankings here to see which Blue Jays prospect um, really got got to you the most this year there's lots of names lots of stuff you could have gone with um who was the one for you though riley that really takes the cake here i'm gonna take i'm gonna take the easy road i honestly yeah. will because it, it's for me it's got to be tiedemann i mean sure. the for the progression that he took the strides he took how good his game got and his still he's still improving he's young um i mean he's an exciting pitcher to watch he's kind of what this team needs 
uh, as far as, you know, we've seen one of our own homegrown pitchers go down this year in a sense. So we like to think that, you know, Tiedemann is going to be on this rotation at some point in the near future. I'm not saying next year by any means, but uh, it's certainly nice to know that you have a potential future ace um, down your pipeline uh, in Ricky Tiedemann. And I mean, he put, he put at whatever level he has participated in, in the minor leagues, he has excelled at that level. So for me, he's an easy, uh, easily our best top prospect or best prospect, whatever you want to call it. Most exciting prospect. I mean, that honor goes to Ricky Tiedemann for the Toronto Blue Jays in the organization. Yeah, he's still our best pitching prospect. Remember when he came into spring training, he threw a, sh- a shutout inning and he looked good and the buzz was going crazy about Ricky Tiedemann. It's a shame that he got hurt this year because he really could have been a part of this uh, 2023 Toronto Blue Jays. But he came back in the second half. He looked good. He looked really good in the Arizona Fall League. And I think he is pitching in winter ball as well. The Blue Jays are trying to ramp him up. And uh, what I liked in the Fall League, Riley, he had back-to-back starts of over five innings. And the Blue Jays are really trying to stretch him put him out there. I think it's all systems go unleash for Ricky Tiedemann next year. Um, my award, Riley, I'm actually going to give it to Orelvis Martinez. And I remember we talked a lot last off season about how volatile, I suppose the skill could be for Orelvis Martinez. We thought he either had massive power or he's going to have massive swing and miss. And he really needs to make some adjustments to take his game for the next level. And Riley, I think he did that in Buffalo. He got there. The home run power still still was there, but he cut his strikeouts. He upped his walks. He was making better swing decisions for the Buffalo Bisons there. And look, for a guy who's got all the tools in the world, you want to see him get it right in between the head. And whatever coaches got into him was really good. I think Orelvis Martinez took a very big step next or last or this season. And he's going to play a big part for the Toronto Blue Jays going forward. I did just want to give one honorable mention, Riley. Um, well, two, I suppose. One to Davis Schneider, who hit 28 home runs in Buffalo. I think only one other minor leaguer hit that much home runs in uh, AAA last year. But the other one I want to give to is Domino um, Paul Magani, the uh, Italian in me, is not going to uh, do this well. But he is in the Arizona Fall League as well. He came off really hot. And um, I think Ross Atkins actually mentioned this guy in his postseason presser, too, as a prospect who really impressed. So keep an eye on that name. You'll likely see him on prospect lists going forward here. And just another name that I think had a breakout season in the farm for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah. And I mean, hey, another name that did not break out, you know, not a letdown by any means. Still got time to turn around. Still anticipating an Addison Barger resurgence here uh, in mm. the near future. It would be suffered would injuries be too. Uh, so another injury guy. I mean, hey, our best rookie next year. We could be we could be having the conversation for a guy like Addison Barger for sure, or our best prospect, depending on where he he lands. It's definitely not out of the question. Uh, as far as Martinez goes, yeah, if you got the power, I don't mind a swing and miss, you know. But and having the walks and the plate discipline is is crucial uh, to take that kind of big swing approach there. So I I, I mean, yeah, it's uh, a Relvis Martinez uh, offensively, and then Tiedemann. Um, as far as, you know, our pitching side goes, I think those are both very safe picks. Yep. And it's very excited to see what shakes up this off season with these guys. If they remain on the roster, if they got sent up for trades, but that is something we'll discuss later on this off season, Riley, moving up back to the big league roster, who wins your most improved player? And I guess I'm going to name this the SO house league hockey award um, for most improved and uh, who gets your award? No, this is the most improved player. This is probably one of the most improved players in the league. Jesse, I'm just teeing this up because you I know you know exactly who I'm going to pick. You love this pick. Mm. A lot of Jays fans came back around on this guy, and rightfully so. Yusei Kikuchi mm-hmm. is not, maybe not. He is the most improved player on the Toronto Blue Jays, and he might be one of, if not the most improved player in all of Major League Baseball. Um, I mean, wh- dude. The walks seem to, you know, fix themselves after some time. They even from the start of the year, they got significantly better as the season on. Not only did you say Kikuchi bring it, you know, at, you know, the start of the year, it seemed like Kikuchi got better as the year year went on. Um, the strikeouts were an insane number. I did not think he was going to be that much um, a guy who would get that many whiffs at pitches or even looks on close pitches and even limit base runners the way he did by, you know, eliminating the walks. Um, Yeah. Hard contact, whatever. Don't care. If you're looking at improvement from where he was uh, the, the previous year, I mean, there was talks if we even want him on a major league roster. No, this guy was 
was fantastic for us this year. One of our four horsemen of the j Pocalypse or whatever you want to call it on the <laughs> rubber. I mean, Kikuchi was fantastic, dude. I mean, he, Jesse, I you can't disagree with this. I'm sure you have Yusei Kikuchi too. Gotta be, right? I mean, Yusei Kikuchi was stellar. So improved, man. Yusei Kikuchi is the answer. Going from negative 0.7 war to 2.6 war in one season, cutting his walk rate in half, Riley. Do you know he had more starts this year with zero walks than he did with three or more walks this year? That's um, insane. Good for him. Good that for is him. wild. That's a stat I did not have coming into the into the bingo card. Um, You could have thrown some love here to Jose Barrios. You could have thrown some love to Kevin Kiermeyer. actually got a little better this year. Brandon Belts got a little bit better this year because he wasn't hurt as much. Um, But I want to throw some love to Kevin Biggio as maybe our most improved player because, um, look, Kikuchi is the answer, don't get me wrong, but uh, Biggio actually turned himself from a guy who we, people wanted him cut off the roster. In fact, I have a roommate who just cannot stand Kevin Biggio, uh, but he actually turned himself into the end of the year, a guy you needed in your lineup every day, a guy who could play good defensively. And I think a lot of that, Riley, just came from practicing, putting in the dedication, giving the hard work. So I just want to throw some love to Kevin Biggio here. Don't hate that. I actually had Biggio as kind of my honorable mention as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he, he, the way he attacked, um, you know, played appearances and, and the versatility. I mean, it's it, it can't be easy going from second base to third from right field all the time. The adjustments he had to make and his role on this team is solidified. Um, but I mean, yeah, for what Kikuchi did and it, as far as innings pitched and innings played for Biggio, I know that position players end up seeing more innings um, on the field than a pitcher would see on the mound. Uh, however, um, I mean, can't go wrong with either one. Although Biggio, you know, I really help. Hey, if he's if he's a starting nine player next year, he's got to start the year the same way he uh, he finished this one. I agree, Riley. We've got a few more to get to, and we've kind of done the basic awards now. These ones are going to be the more fun ones, the wild ones, the ones where we get a little crazy. Starting with this one, Riley, this is the Wilmer Flores No Crying in Baseball Award, and this is the award we gave us to the biggest crybaby on the Toronto Blue Jays, Riley. And uh, look, I have a name for this. I wonder what you came up with here, too, but uh, who wins this award for you? So I had this coach in, in hockey, and I uh, I don't want to name drop or anything like that, but he always would say, don't let the highs get too high, and don't let the lows get too low. And this guy is probably the worst player in Major League Baseball at getting way too excited for things and then getting way down. I don't know if he actually physically cried, but in, – in He's on the inside. He's crying. And I think it is from a lack of maturity. That's right. If you don't know who I'm teeing up, I'm saying that this award for me goes to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And oh, wow. I don't know if that I don't know if that's going to get my head stomped in by Jays fans. But this Ooh. is how I feel. I think I think that Vladdy has a lot, a lot, a lot of maturing to do, man. And um, I, I mean, you can connect the word cry. How cry may be such a harsh word. I mean, yes, there's no crying in baseball. Vladdy knows that. His dad's a Hall of Famer. Rule number one, no crying in baseball. I mean, but I mean, Vladdy just he just is a, seems like a pouty kid to me sometimes, man. And I'd like the way to not win this ward is just kind of mature. And I'm sure as the seasons go on and the years go on, he'll develop into, a, you know, a leading veteran presence. He might be a leader now. But I think it's just because of a, the silver spoon in his pocket that he was given and less about, you know, what one good year he's had. Like, I, I expect big things. He gets this award for me because it's kind of a thumbs down. I needed to talk about Vladdy on this. This is the only time I'm probably going to go off and talk about Vladdy. And sadly, this is where he sits. Not saying that he cried, but I'm going to use the expression like my old coach said. He let the highs get too high. He got way too, you know, jazzed up and pumped and then got way too down when, you know, he didn't quit on the team or anything like that. But he almost, he quit on himself for a bit and not running balls out. You know, you pop a ball up. That's kind of a crybaby thing to do. Oh, I popped the ball up to the second baseman. I'm just going to walk to first base. Mm -hmm. Pete Rose had never did that. And I was, well, I can't say Pete Rose. Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. That's a whole other story. But for me, Vladdy wins this award. You know, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm pumped to give it to him, but that's, that's my reasoning, Jesse. And I'm excited and curious, very curious to see what you had. Interesting one, Riley. Um, We have talked about Vlad's characteristic trait. I remember when Isaac was here, we talked a little about that and how we thought Vladdy might have been a little soft, right? And he needs to kind of toughen up to really take the load and get over it in a little bit. But uh, 
Riley, Vladdy didn't quit on this team. My biggest crybaby, and which might go into our next award, which is the biggest disappointment, is somebody who actually did quit on this team. And that is Alec Manoa, who not only was he terrible, not only did he get sent down due to performance-based reasons, the Blue Jays brought him back up, and he was bad again. So the Blue Jays sent him back down again. And the little... Look, we don't know all the details, so I don't want to speak out of place here, but when he went down to Buffalo and refused his assignments and stuff and wasn't able to pitch when the Blue Jays would need him later in the year if they ever needed a starter, Alec Manoa literally quit on this team and seemed to have a little bit of a hissy fit about it. So for me, you win the Wilmer Flores No Crying in Baseball Award, but uh, it's tough. Not a good look for either player on this one. I'm I'm, I'm just going to refrain from saying everything. Jesse, let's transition into the next award. Yeah, which is going right to the same place. And that is the Blue Jays' biggest disappointment award. Um, I feel like Alec Manoa's name is going to come a lot, a lot here. This is the answer. <laughs> like, not only yeah. was the biggest disappointment in baseball, he was uh, the Blue Jays, he was probably the biggest disappointment in baseball. I'll let you have your words here, Riley. What do you got to say about Alec Manoa? I, I mean, Jesse, like, um, you could, cu- I mean, hey, like, I can't, do- I don't want to double up awards in this. I want to share the wealth. I want to share the sure. wealth. You know, like, if I want the worst of it's kind of like the word disappointment. You know, when your parents told you, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. That always hurt worse. Um, mm-hmm. Blue Jays fans are both right now. I mean, they want they want to um, basically tie this guy up and throw stones at him. Uh, I mean, it's terrible um, what he did to this team. That is not a team player kind of guy. I mean, especially at that age. If this is a 36-year-old player that has eight years of service time and he gets sent down and he wants to call it quits, sure. If you were a blue chip prospect in 2008 and that's well worn off and you have you have your 123 home runs, you have your 261 lifetime batting average, and maybe, maybe, maybe you made it to a couple ALCSs in your career and, and your eight-year time, and you call that a career because you don't want to get set down, that's fine. I'm fine with the guy calling it at that point because there are replacement level baseball players filter themselves in and out. There's a lot of turnover in baseball. There shouldn't be a turnover in baseball when a player finishes second in Cy Young. That's that's insane, especially the age he's in. We don't know why this is. His psyche clearly, his physical and his psyche did not match up. Whether the rules that were implemented into baseball this year affected him like he needs to make that adjustment we all made this adjustment every pitcher in major league baseball were playing on the same grounds these rules weren't just in place for alec manoa he needed to make those adjustments he failed to do so and yeah like i said i think it comes down to a lot of psyche a lot of mindset things and another guy who let the highs get way too high you know he was so hype and he was he was a bulldog um, in his first full year, and then just an absolute drag uh, this year. Biggest disappoint, biggest disappointment in Major League Baseball, I would say. And and Jesse, just one more thing, real quick. If he doesn't pitch another major league inning or any sort of quality, impactful piece to a team, I would almost call it one of the biggest disappointments in Major League history. The biggest flash in the pans that you could ever wow. imagine. And, so, and not maybe not all the sports, but you get where I'm going with this, man. I mean, it's insane the drop that this guy had. Yeah, definitely agree with that one, Riley. Um, biggest story in all of baseball. Riley, we have about seven more awards, and we got about 10 to 15 minutes to go, so we're going to have to power through the rest of these ones. And we're starting with Mr. Consistency, Riley. Who is the most consistent Blue Jay for you this year? Well, because I love to share awards, and I thought our pitching yeah. was so damn consistent. And I got another guy I thought about being improved, and he was improved, but he also was consistent, a, a lot more consistent than he was last year to tie it in. I'm going with Jose Barrios. He did okay, have yeah. a couple of blowups, but at the same time, too, consistency for me when you're talking about a pitcher is I can't – because. Kevin Gosman could have won Mr. Cons- consistency. You know, I already gave him a award. I, consistency for me is, do I feel comfortable with this guy's toe on the rubber? And at the start of this year, I, I probably had higher hopes than most. I, uh, you know, I was, you know, very mixed feelings. But shortly into the year, I thought, I want this guy on the hill. He's changed a little bit. Something's going on. And he started to have these big strikeout games. He was pitching deeper into the ball game. 
And he was locating his pitches a lot better. Of course, he still got hit hard sometimes. Um, you know, he gave up some base runners. But as far as consistent pitching, he was a perfect 3-4-esque type of guy this year. And, I mean, whether he deserves this award or not, I just basically use th these awards as an excuse to talk about these guys. And mm -hmm. Barrios was consistent enough for me to give this award to him and share the wealth among our four great starting pitchers. Spoiler alert, I've only talked about three, so I guess there's one more coming <laughs> later. But but for me, it's Barrios with the consistency award. Yeah, I wanted to throw some love to a guy in our bullpen and uh, middle relievers aren't talked about as much, but they are just as important to the team as everyone else. I gave my Mr. Consistency Award to Tim Meza, who is coming out of the left-hand side of the bullpen. He had a great season out of there. You could always rely on him to get quality outs, quality at-bats. Um, he didn't allow an earned run, I think, until what, August, something late for uh, Tim Meza. So I want to throw him some love as my Mr. Consistency. Riley, from the consistency award to the leadership role uh the team captain award which guy do you think was the leader in the clubhouse for the blue jays i i think it, it, and i think this guy it's not what people said about him it's more what how he talked about his teammates and his peers and things like that i want to give this award to matt chapman i feel okay. like i feel like the way he spoke of players if he's saying these things you know backing up kikuchi and um you know talking about belt and things like that um, I mean, Chapman had a poor year. There's no question about it. Um, whether he's a Blue Jay or not, he's a veteran guy. He's been around the league and he knows the guys. He's a very personable guy. And he's, listen, if we had some more young, mature superstars, I mean, there's two, like you could give this, this is a veteran award for me. George Springer's up there. I mean, Brandon Belt as well. But yep. for me, it's going to be I, I like the the things that Matt Chapman said about his 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 teammates. And I think it go. I don't know for sure, because, you know, there wasn't too many interest, instances where guys had to speak too much about Chapman unless it was on his cold streaks. But uh, the way Chapman speaks about his teammates, I think that's a great teammate. I think that's a great leader. And I'm sure it's reciprocated in the clubhouse. Yeah, Matt Chapman is a great answer. I gave mine to Brandon Belt, just old guy, veteran, guy who's been there, guy had playoff experience, but I don't think there was a wrong answer here. You could have gone Springer too. I just thought Springer might have been a little quiet. Same with Kevin Gosman, just a little bit of quiet. Yeah, Matt Chapman doesn't, or Whit Merrifield actually could have been a guy too that I could have gone for this. A guy who talked to the media a lot, a guy who wasn't afraid to say a voice in the clubhouse. All good answers there, Riley. Um, we got to be real quick with these next ones, Riley. Um, best bullpen arm. It's Jordan Romano, right? Well, I went way off the board. I was I was yeah. very frustrated. I said Tim Mesa. Oh, okay. I said Tim, well, yes. I, I, I said Tim Mesa. He was the most consistent for the long time. I want this guy to get more high leverage roles next year. I don't care whether he throws with his right arm, his left arm, or both arms, or no arms. <laughs> like I thought Tim Mesa for a period of time, he was one of the best, if not the best, left-handed relief pitcher in all of baseball, minus maybe a guy like Josh Hader. Um, I want to see him in more high leverage. Um, why that we're still thinking him as kind of a specialist middle guy is beyond me. He is a high velocity left-handed guy with some good, hard, sharp movement. And I want to see him used more in important moments of baseball games and not get hung out. Uh, I voted for um, Jordan Hicks just for how good and how dominant he was, but only 24 innings after the trade deadline here. And look, Riley, Jordan Romano, 1.2 war um, on the season. Tim Meza, 1.3. So you can make the argument that Tim Meza was more valuable for the Toronto Blue Jays out of the bullpen. Riley, we got five more to go here and we're running out of time. So let's be quick. This one is the wildest story of the season award, Riley. And um, what is your wildest story for the Toronto Blue Jays this year? I mean, my wildest story is basically I have in my notes, I say Manoa hero to zero. Yeah. I mean, it's a that's got to be it, right? It's 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 crazy to even fathom. We've already discussed. I I know there's a ton of stories, but if you're looking at the this J season as a whole, I think this overshadows so much. I think that this what happens after this is very important and will really affect this team's franchise for for years to come. Yep. Um, I want to throw some love, which would be something you might want to bring up a little later. Um, but that's Chris Bassett. How we threw that gem in uh, New York, I think it was eight innings pitch. I can pull up the stat line here. And then he immediately left to go be with his wife who was giving birth all within the span of 24 hours. His best start of the season becomes a dad. Um, I don't think that was talked about enough 
um, for Chris Bassett and the Blue Jays this year. And that was by far one of my wildest stories that from the Toronto Blue Jays season this year. Yeah. And um, well, if you stole one of my awards for later on, I mm-hmm. wanted to tell the the Bassett having his uh, his child in, in throwing eight innings. But hey, it's a, also a story that doesn't get talked about enough because that's just amazing, amazing, you know, human stuff, you know, and then going to be able to go to your job, you know, and and basically, you know, have a kid in the span of 24 or whatever hour doesn't doesn't matter. It's a lot of pressure going on for him, and he he is a rise to the occasion kind of guy. And on top of that, with all the money he donated for the Jays Care Foundation, we're getting 15 wins and stuff too. Um, just kudos to you, Chris Bassett. Glad you're on our team. Um, four more awards, Riley. This one, the Mister Clutch Award. Which player on the Blue Jays came the most clutch? I went Riley with Danny Jansen. I remember him hitting a couple home runs late. I remember one especially, which gave the Blue Jays a very much needed win. Please stay healthy for a full year, Danny Jansen. I can't wait to see what we get. Uh, but who is your winner for the Mr. Clutch Award? You're going to love this, Jesse. I lied to you. I wrote, oh. I refuse to answer this question because <laughs> okay. I don't think that we had any co- Danny Jansen shirt. Like when it comes down to it, when you're going to talk about cut clutch players, the Blue Jays are dead to last on a list of clutch players. Uh, sure. I'll make, make it real easy for you. I didn't want it. I wanted to be, di- wanted to be different. I wanted to be witty. I don't, I don't, I don't think we were clutch at all this year. I don't think anyone deserves. I'm taking home most clutch player, or you're taking home most clutch player. Like you know, it's uh, we weren't a clutch team this year, Jesse. In terms of fan graphs, the Blue Jays with the biggest clutch rating was actually Eric Swanson pitching out of the bullpen. So. I guess him, but it sure doesn't feel like it for this Toronto Blue Jays. There wasn't a guy who came up consistently out and end. We need that to be better next year. Riley, this next award goes for the best Blue Jays soundbite of the year. And I'm curious to see what you came up with. Which one was it? Well, of course, I'm going with Crafty and Woody. And this one isn't really a soundbite at all. I'm going with when Pete Walker got tossed and he covered his <laughs> yeah. mouth like this. And yep. we don't really know what he said. But I'm sure somewhere in someone's in someone's mind, the minds of the umpire and the minds of the player, Pete Walker said something amazing. And I don't like to do a whole lot of profanity on the podcast. If you see me in real life, you probably think, why is he talking so eloquently and swiftly on this show? <laughs> um, but Pete Walker, I'm sure, said something absolutely genius. I mean, how often do you see that? I wasn't even looking at the guy. You can just imagine what he said. I mean, there's a lot of fun things uh, when you think of Blue Jays sound, sound bites and, and things like that, like the all time monkey, no cramp, of course, Buninori Kawasaki. But this year's, I want to go a little bit different. I want to give it to Pete Walker for not what we heard, but what he said, and we don't know what he said. Maybe it will come into uh, the works and we'll know what he said, you know, maybe down the line. Yeah, Pete Walker doesn't seem like the type of guy to keep his opinions to himself. I think if he has something he wants to be said, he will say it. Riley, my winner for this award goes to a post-game interview, and that was one that Yusei Kikuchi made. And that was the whole comment about him needing 14 hours of sleep every night, about how he goes home and he rests and he sleeps on the plane. And there were reports from his teammates that said, yeah, Yusei Kikuchi can sleep anywhere. And as someone who, well, can't sleep anywhere, I am uh, very adamant and respectful of that and still in awe with Yusei Kikuchi and how he was able to do that. Uh, Riley, we got two more awards left. First one um, was one you came up with before we get in here. I want to know what was your worst play of the year, individual play for the Toronto Blue Jays this year. Again, just because I want to talk about this, because because it's a year-end review, not even our year-end review, but a year-end review before we talk about that. Jesse, of course, it would come no surprise that my – Worst play of the year was the game I was at against Boston where Alejandro Kirk got thrown out at second base because he can't turn um, a double. In, well, it's not turning a single into a double. It's turning a double into a double or a triple if your name's Kevin Kiermaier or Dalton Varsho. Um, yeah, if you're 23, 24 years old or if you're four years old and a little bit athletic, you can probably run that for two bases. Um, uh, hold Kirk at first, please. Um, and don't, and don't let him take second base, uh, things like that drive me nuts. I know that catchers are, it's okay. And I'm not here to body shame. I'm not here to do anything like that, but you gotta be able to either know to stay at first base or run that out for two bases. That's all. Just thought I'd get that in there. 
Yeah, and there was a few more with Kirk, too. I remember getting thrown out of the plate on a sack fly. A few times he wasn't even hustling to first. There was a few that just looked awful from Alejandro Kirk. Um, Riley, I think the real answer, just because the high stakes we were in, was in the wild card round when Vladimir Guerrero Jr. got picked off second base. I'm sure, hey, look, players get picked off all year, but I think just from the high stakes moments we were at, and that was Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who was supposed to be our best player, getting picked off there, does not seem ideal. And Riley, one more award, the last one, the penultimate um, award for the Toronto Blue Jays. And this is going to your best off-field moment, Riley. Something off the diamond that really caught your attention this year. What was it? Well, of course, it goes back to the Chris Bassett pitching eight innings and then um, him and his partner having a child. And I think that that is, just goes with kind of the humanitarian side of baseball. Um, you know, you and I, you know, if we have something big going on, if we... If we falter a little bit at work, and not that it's, you know, people are probably not going to be too pleased, but there can be some leeway. There can be some understanding in that. Like if Chris Bassett went out and threw four innings and gave up four earned runs, you know, whatever, your mind's clouded with certain things. Consummate professional. Um, I was stoked when Chris Bassett came to this team. I also want to add on that he was my honorable mention as well for the team captain. I really okay, like, I like Chris Bassett. I really like Chris Bassett. I think he is a fantastic pitcher and I think he's an even better person in, in life. So this is the kind of guy that I think not, you obviously can't build your team around him. He's too old to do that. But if you want to talk about adding a good piece, I mean, I'd be chomping if I'm if I'm probably everyone except for Oakland in the Mets. If I'm 26 other teams or 27 other teams, when this guy hits free agency, I'm chomping at the bit to get this guy on my rotation, whether he's 38 years old or not, because you want him in the clubhouse, you want him around the field you want him around the players i mean best off field moment and of course the donations too to jay's care a lot of wins for chris bassett too mm -hmm. the guy is like fine wine he just keeps getting better and better with age i mean of course you know starting your career off and well i think he pitched for the white Sox, but uh you know the the most in, of his career spent in oakland probably not a great time for him and he didn't even start a ton of games but um you know going to the mets and then coming over to toronto he is he could have won a ton of awards i think chris bassett is one of my more favorite pitching acquisitions personally my one of my personal favorite guys and uh i had, I had to talk about him at some point. Best off-field moment. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Bassett. And, you know, like, that's... I wouldn't be surprised if we get another crazy story with Chris Bassett next year. Like, uh cat falling out of a two-story building <laughs> and he catches it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's just that kind of guy. Chris Bassett, cat savior. That'll be a big headline. Maybe a title episode that we can use uh, later on this year. Riley, my award for this is two. One, I just, I love a good party. I love a good celebration. So the Blue Jays, when they clinched, they were at home. They were able to celebrate. Um, that was always very nice. Good to see the people in the dugout having a lot of fun. Um, but my moment, I want to go all the way back to spring training, Riley. And there was a report came out with John Schneider was out for dinner with his wife. And there was a gentleman who was choking. And John Schneider went over without hesitation, gave him the Heimlich maneuver. Um, I know it doesn't have much to do with the job on a field, but it just goes to show that John Schneider, hey, look, he cares. He's a good, good guy. He saved somebody's life. And I think anytime you can save someone's life, that deserves a trophy from you and I here on Buds and Blue Jays. Um, That'll do it for our awards here today, guys. Let us know what you thought. If you had a different answer, if you had an award that you wanted to give out, please um, leave a comment down below. Talk to Riley and I about it. We will interact with you. We love doing stuff like these. Always fun. Always creative. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for our episode here today. Um, Riley, anything else to add before we get out of here? No, man. Uh, I don't know if I'll talk to you over the weekend enjoy the world series man i haven't got to enjoy a baseball game in a little bit just because i'm a salty brat that way <laughs> but um I'm, I'm about we're gonna see some good things man i'm it was you know their last time texas was in the world series that was one of the best world series of all time so true. i mean maybe we get a repeat of that i don't know man but if you do if you do with the kind of correct kind of thing there well maybe moreno will be like a david freeze and we'll see some magic happen um from his bat it's already been popping off but um either way i don't care who wins i would love to see the two xjs get rings 
However, I just want to see some good ball. I'd love to see this series go seven games so we can just get the most baseball possible. Me too, me too. And for us next week, I think we're actually going to finally look at the roster and kind of give an off-season overview. Who should the Blue Jays sign? Who should the Blue Jays keep? And we'll dive deep into that. So leave a comment down below if you want to see interested in that as well. Until then, guys, we will see you again next week. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and all that fun stuff. But let's go Blue Jays. Thanks, guys.